Before we begin, I'd like to throw in a disclaimer here real quick. Just because this video isn't going to be as mostly negative as a bunch of other reviews out there, that does not mean that I want to devalue what others have said about this game, and definitely doesn't mean that I'm going to try to defend Sega's handling of this project. Just because my experience with this game was not that bad at all, that does not mean that releasing remasters of these old games that are quite buggy to the point of being broken in some cases, with really subpar excuses for features at that asking price, along with some really scummy excuses for DLC content is acceptable or should be encouraged. Sega absolutely could have done a lot better here, and yes, it is Sega to blame here and not the development team. Alright, with that out of the way, let's get into it. So, Sonic Origins is a bit of a weird case. Honestly, with the amount of upgraded modern ways there have been to play these old games over the years, you'd think Sega would level up from a classic Sonic collection to maybe an old 3D Sonic collection by now, considering how long it's been and how much the fans have been clambering for that at this point. Like maybe Adventure, Adventure 2, and maybe throw in Heroes as well. But whatever, what we've been given is another classics compilation, so this is what we've got to talk about, and I gotta say, I have been having a blast with Sonic Origins. It's already easily the way that I've played these old games the most and explored them the furthest in, and it's one of the games I've been playing the most on my Nintendo Switch at the moment. So it did kind of confuse me at first to see that a lot of people online aren't the happiest with this, to say the least. I just remember being really perplexed when these reviews started coming out and seeing titles like Sonic Origins is a massive disappointment and Sonic Origins, how embarrassing. And just being like, what? You've got a modern way to play these iconic games, plus a long-awaited three and knuckles with some major quality of life improvements, what more could you want? But after listening to people's points and following the discourse, people do definitely have plenty of valid points, even if they don't entirely align with my experience of the game. And in fairness, these games have been released and re-released and played through to death by Sonic fans by now to the point where if you are a veteran of playing classic Sonic and all its different versions, you kind of are going to start comparing them in the little ways, like how they've been built and handled and the extras you get, because, I, uh, you know, the sky is blue, classic Sonic games are good, like yeah, what else you got? So I'm kind of just going to talk about my perspective on this game from playing it in relation to what other people have said, and that's the key thing here, perspective. So here's mine. I'm not exactly a veteran when it comes to these games. They've been in my life for a while, but up until the last few years when I've really started to become a fan, I hadn't really had much of an in-depth experience with them. I remember having versions of Sonic 1 and 2 on my fucking old ass iPod Touch all the way back in primary school, and I don't think those would be the Christian Whitehead remasters back then, they were some kind of older versions, at least I'm pretty certain I'm not making that up. I'm honestly not sure, but fuck me, I'm 21, my decrepit old man body is deteriorating by the day. When it came to me a few years later getting into collecting retro games and filling out the libraries, obviously when I got my Sega Mega Drive, of course Sonic was a must, and I got OG copies of Sonic 1 and 2. Haven't really booted them up that much though, since yeah, it's dope to be able to play original games on original hardware for that authentic retro experience, but playing modern versions on modern hardware is just so much better. And my GameCube library has Sonic Mega Collection, my DS library has Sonic Classics Collection. I also have the Sega Mega Drive Classic Mini Console, and I've played around a little bit with Sonic 1 and 2 on it, but hey, when it came to me now properly becoming a fan, I had to finally properly play through and beat these games. Enter the Sega Ages versions of Sonic 1 and 2 on the Switch eShop. A couple years ago I bought these and I made it my mission to finally be able to say that I've played and beaten these games, and I did just that without getting the Chaos Emeralds, and by occasionally using save states. Wait, what, good guys? Hello? And of course, still no Sonic 3 and Knuckles. It was on the DS Classics collection, and I had a little bit of a play around with that a while before Origins came out, and I think I got as far as Hydrocity, and I did intend to come back to it, but that just never happened. Also, yes, that is how I'm saying it, and you can fight me on that. Not because I think that's the original intent or what I think is canon, but purely because it's more fun to say. Hydrosity. Hydrosity. Hell yeah, it just sounds cool. And finally, enter Sonic Origins. So what have I done so far? Well, I've nearly beaten Sonic 1, I'm on Scrap Brain Zone and I have all the Chaos Emeralds. I'm a decent way through Sonic 2, I'm on Mystic Cave Zone and have 5 of 7 Emeralds. 
Haven't quite delved into Sonic CD just yet. I've beaten the 3 portion of Sonic 3 and Knuckles with all the Chaos Emeralds, and as for the and Knuckles portion, I'm on Sandopolis and have a couple of the Super Emeralds. So, I've defo put my time into this game so far, and I've done so much more with them already than I ever had with any previous versions of these games, and it feels good, man. Now, there's a very key reason for why I've been able to do so much of these games, and that being the Anniversary Mode. Now, let me tell you, this shit right here is a godsend. For those who ain't aware, which I honestly highly highly doubt if you're watching an obscure small YouTuber Sonic Origins review, this collection for each of the classic Sonic games gives you a choice of a classic mode or an anniversary mode. The classic mode is sort of the original game in its OG form, 4x3 aspect ratio and a live system. You run out of lives and die, you gotta start all over again. Except in the case of Sonic 1, it's not quite the original experience because it's like a lot of its modern versions where it still has Sonic 2 spin dash. Which sure, it would have been nice to have this as an option to turn it off if you really wanted to have the proper original experience, that's kind of a downside, but when I'm playing it I'm not mad because it just makes the game so much more playable, although being able to disable it would have been nice for authenticity's sake. As for the anniversary mode, we have the games in all their 16x9 glory, including Sonic 3 and Knuckles which I'm pretty sure hadn't been done before, and the life system is done away with, you can die as much as you want, which honestly considering how much of the skill curve of these games is based on practice and trial and error, is just kind of how these games should be in the modern day. And the lives are replaced with coins, which you can automatically start with a certain amount with, and you can earn them in place of 1-ups and by beating missions in the game's mission mode. You can use them to purchase little bonuses, but they have one main key purpose. the special stages. In the OG versions of these games, you hop into special stages with the goal of collecting a Chaos Emerald, and if you fail to do that, then too bad, no Emerald for you, fuck off out of here and try again next time you're able to hop in a special stage. And if you're too far along into the game to get enough special stages to get all the Emeralds, or struggle to get any before beating the game, then boohoo, fuck you, bad ending for you, start the whole game over and try again. <laughs> Yet yeah, in these anniversary modes, when you hop into a special stage and fail to get the emerald, you'll be given a choice to spend a coin to try the stage over again, and so long as you have coins left, you can do this indefinitely until you either run out or get the emerald. And if you want to stick to the authentic experience and only give yourself the one chance, I mean for that you could just play the classic mode, but whatever, you can simply choose not to and move on. Again, this shit is a godsend. To take you back to the early 90s when these games were brand new and we were playing them on our Mega Drives, it made sense that a lot of these games were based on practice and trial and error. In fact, a lot of Sonic's level design is based on that. You're not going to be able to flawlessly zip through these levels at Sonic speed, getting all the rings, getting all the emeralds and looking awesome all the way. That shit takes practice and playing through these levels time and time again until you get good at them. And back in the day, most kids wouldn't have had a massive library of games, just a select few that they'd frequently boot up and replay through, so they would have put loads of time into replaying these levels until they got good at them. Learning the best ways to find these special stages and actually having played them enough times to memorise how to beat them. This made sense for back in the day. But obviously I'm not a child in the early 90s, I'm an adult in 2022 and I'm just not going to have the time to sink entire chunks of my life into binge playing these games over and over again man. Plus, look at my stature switch games man, I, I got so many games, I got so many games. Not only are these just my switch games alone, these are just my physical ones. If you include my digital library this shit right here like triples in size. Like, I got me other shit to play, man. So not only am I just not gonna have the time to sink into all it would take to be able to not only get back into a special stage I fail if I even get a chance to without restarting the entire game, but all the attempts it would take to do that if I kept failing to try and learn them. So just being able to retry them instantly is a huge deal and almost makes the entire thing worth it on its own for me. Almost. And the wild thing is, it's actually taken some of these special stages, which for the longest time had stuck in my mind as being ridiculously hellishly fucking hard, and allow me to be able to put them into perspective a lot better and help me see them as being so much easier. Take for example, Sonic 2 special stages. For me, for the longest time, these were my least favourite special stages in all of Classic Sonic. Yes, they're a better idea for special stages than those in Sonic 1, but those always felt so much more doable than these. I always felt like, yeah, the first couple of ones were pretty alright, but from there they developed this ridiculously high difficulty curve and are some of the most difficult, unfair, frustrating, irritating, want to burn it with fire and eating, fuck these goddamn stages. But actually, playing them recently in Sonic Origins, along with these far improved visuals to the originals that are actually so much easier to stomach looking at, thank you very much Lee, being able to immediately hop back in after failing and 
you know, actually being able to try to learn them, I found myself breezing through the later ones with very few attempts at a time due to having been able to get a decent amount of practice in with the earlier ones and just thinking, you know what, these aren't anywhere near as hard as I was being led to believe. Now, what else have people been saying about the game? Well, of course, a big focus is that like after a decade, we're getting a nice brand spanking new version of Three and Knuckles after like a decade of it not being released again. In widescreen with all the trimmings. Now, this took a while because, as we all know, Michael Jackson, despite being uncredited, contributed to the soundtrack of the game, and since then there have been issues with it when it comes to re-releases of the game due to rights issues between Michael Jackson's estate and Sega over his tracks in the game. So now in the Origins versions of the game, Michael Jackson's songs have simply been omitted and replaced with remasters of the prototype songs for these levels from the original PC port of the game. Now, some people seem to really be kicking up a fuss over this, and yeah, sure, it is kind of a shame. One of the things Sonic is known for is its music, and each track being a straight up bop, so when it comes to an anniversary collection, sure missing out on the original music is defo a loss. However, I'm not too mad because it doesn't impact the overall gameplay and because some of those old tracks that have been replaced, like Carnival Night Zone for example. Yeah, this might be a hot take, but sorry, not sorry, this shit's ass, I'm sorry. But as for people's complaints that do impact the gameplay, these versions of the games are kinda broken. There have been sightings of glitches all over the shop and new ones are still being shared around, mostly graphical ones like the colour palette occasionally going home because it's drunk and the water turning white of all things, and some of them being full game breaking bugs from clipping through walls to falling through platforms, the works. Now I'm about to say something and before I do let me remind you of my disclaimer at the beginning. Me saying this is not to devalue or to discredit what other people have said about their experiences. These bugs irrefutably do exist and are causing an array of problems for an array of people trying to play and enjoy this game that they paid money for, and the fact that these 30 year old games are being re-released with the variety of bugs that they have been, especially since they were rebuilt in the retro engine with one goal being to snuff out bugs that may have been in the originals, is completely unacceptable. But here goes. I have not encountered any game breaking glitches, not graphical or gameplay based. They haven't affected me in the slightest, which may be why I'm not as harsh on this game from my experience. The only bug that I have encountered is the Tails bug in Sonic 2 where he falls too far behind and rather than just him teleporting further forward so he can safely fly back to you, he gets stuck somewhere and you can just constantly hear him jumping in the background trying to get back to you. And apparently as of recording this, even that's now getting patched out soon. Annoying sure, but not game breaking. Although it goes without saying, that doesn't make it any more acceptable. This wasn't an issue in the game 30 years ago, it shouldn't be an issue now. And I'd like to add to the many people discussing this, basically just making this one thing clear. This was not the fault of the development team. They've made it very clear that they aren't happy with the final product. They aimed higher for this game, they wanted more for this game, but Sega, in typical Sega fashion, could just not cope with the idea of delaying the game for the sake of a higher quality product. It had to go out on the set day of release. That being so Sonic's anniversary date of June 23rd, no matter what state it was in. Something that you think they would have learned from, as well, after having been relentlessly memed on for Sonic 06 and Sonic Boom non-stop ever since they ended up how they did for the exact same reason. It's ridiculous and should not still be happening. But to steer back into a somewhat more positive direction, we've got little extras that were thrown in here, and to start with we've got the new animated cutscenes, and these things are gorgeous. I love these so much. From actually having an animated visual representation of Sonic first finding out what Eggman was doing at the start of Sonic 1, Tails first meeting Sonic and discovering he could fly at the start of Sonic 2, Amy and Metal Sonic being thrown into the mix in CD, Knuckles and Eggman forming their alliance at the start of Sonic 3, it's all so cool. And considering for the longest time these events would only have been observed in writing, this is pretty landmark stuff and with a really cool art style and great animation to boot, seriously, I love these things. If anything it would have been nice to see 
more since these things were an aid of the game's new story mode in which you play through each game one after another with the cutscenes in between to play through the full classic story. Even though there's still the breaks in between them in the form of the ending scenes and credits so it doesn't really feel like you're playing these as all one game but whatever we move I guess. It would have been nice to see more of them maybe between certain levels or acts or leading up to bosses or in place of the game's ending screens or something like that but hey animation's hard and takes a while so that's kind of a big ask. Honestly I'm just glad we have them all and glad they turned out as awesome as they did. We also have a mission mode. Yes a fucking mission mode which is something I'm always going to champion. The amount of games that could be improved solely by a mission mode based on the core gameplay is unparalleled. This shit will always be a great idea for replay value and a bonus little bit of fun. And to address Nintendo for a second, why has Mario Kart never had a mission mode again since Mario Kart DS? That was one of the best parts of the game and you know it. Give us another mission mode for Mario Kart you cowards. But yeah, always here for a mission mode, it's a great addition and the DLC includes some super hard missions as well, probably the only good thing about the DLC since the rest is just the equivalent of buying in-game fucking NFTs. Seriously, bonus in-game little animations and graphics, really Sega? I'm sorry, I'm not going to be praising or making excuses for that, that shit sucks, not a fan, not a vibe, but don't worry. We'll come back to that. We also have a mirror mode in which you can play through the games backwards and yeah, why the fuck not? Considering again how much of getting good at these games is based on practice, yeah, that's a really solid idea for a new way to play. I'm here for it. Oh, wait, what's that? We're, we're coming back to the DLC thing already? Right now? <sighs> Alright, okay, let's do this. Let me show an example of a DLC that came out this year that people loved. Cuphead, the delicious last course. It took multiple years longer to come out than planned in typical Cuphead fashion, but with it, what did we get? A new world with loads of new bosses to beat and secrets to find, items to buy including shots and charms that could be used in the base game along with an entirely new playable character with different mechanics that can also be used in the main game. This is a DLC. And what does Sonic Origins offer in its DLC? Well, on certain screens you can have say, what amounts to a little gif of Metal Sonic dancing and the ability to be like, yep, I paid for that. We do also get some extra hard missions, which, yeah, okay, that's definitely decent DLC material, but you essentially had a full game here and Sega went, Right, what about this can we trim off and offer as a little DLC or pre-order bonus? For example, Sonic Mega Collection on the PS2, Xbox and GameCube. It had all the games that Sonic Origins had along with Sonic 3D Blast, Sonic Spinball, Mean Bean Machine. Why not later down the line offer remasters of these as DLC? It would still kind of suck since a past compilation from literally 20 years ago offered these with the base game, but you know, it's something and it actually makes sense. Maybe remaster the 8-bit counterparts to Sonic 1 and 2, you know, the Master System slash Game Gear versions. Maybe other titles like Sonic Chaos, Tales Sky Patrol, Triple Trouble, Knuckles Chaotix. Again, it's not much and it's stuff they would have just gotten with the game a while ago, but if you had to include DLC, or at least some at some point, then it's something, you know? Oh yeah, and there's also a DLC pack that adds more music tracks? Because, you know, our Switches, Xboxes and Playstations are definitely our prime main music devices. We're all carrying those around in our pockets, just jamming out to music on our commutes to work with them. Because fuck lugging a goddamn smartphone around with Spotify or YouTube, am I right? You know what's the most annoying part about that? The music you already get with the game is from Sonic 1, 2, CD and 3 and Knuckles, obviously. These bonus DLC tracks, you know what they're from? Fucking Sonic 3D Blast, Knuckles Chaotix, and Sonic Spinball. So Sega did not forget about these games, but did they actually want to include them, or just have those games be the DLC? Well, to quote from my video about JXE's Doctor Who video last year... Nah. And well, to end this at a very abrupt and sudden point, yeah, that's Sonic Origins. It's good but it's not great. And in a lot of ways, it does the absolute bare minimum with a lot of lack of customization options, but the options we do get for these games are very good, whether you want more of an authentic original experience or an accessible modern one. Like, seriously, I cannot praise the anniversary mode highly enough, like, genuinely. A story mode, which, as excited I was for it, it is kind of pointless and disappointing overall, although playing through all the games one after another can make for a cool gaming session. It was a reason to give us these animations, which, once again, I also so can't praise highly enough, even if 
hope I do wish there were more of them. Some good bonus ways to play as well, and of course these iconic main games just delivered in a state that while it hasn't caused me many problems, really dragged this down for a lot of people in a terrible yet perfectly avoidable way that speaks volumes about Sega's management, and seriously Sega, get your shit together already. This collection should have been gold, but instead it's more like gold dust sprinkled on a turd, or dangleberries sprinkled on a gold bar, depending on who you ask. But for my time with it, I'm happy with it enough, and I'm satisfied. Just satisfied. And I hope you're happy and satisfied with this video. Leave a like down below and subscribe if you were, maybe share it around or drop a comment. All things to help this video and me out a lot, and will mean I owe you a big wet sloppy kiss if I ever meet you. And it will come at a completely random interval, just like my upload schedule. I like keeping you on your toes. And thank you so much for watching, all you BEA beautiful people, however many or few of you there may be, and I'll see you next time. Cheers. I uh, had a very clever idea for my uh, my outro. You see how I normally be playing a record, but instead I'm playing uh, uh, Sonic music because Sonic Origins is a music player. Did you know that? Did you know that? It's really clever. It's really cool. Uh, I think you should try it. It's really